Welcome in, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a reaction to the Flyers' offense being ice cold again, or as cold as ice. It's as cold as ice. That's the Flyers' offense. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Borick, a reaction to the 3 0 Flyers' loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs, who are, by the way, the best Corsi team goals for goals against in the NHL, as JJ said. I'm just wearing this hat, by the way, because. Phantoms had a good game, and I don't know where my Phantom had it. And they were the team that performed well in the Flyers organization. Royals also lost, and then Flyers got shut out. It's nine goals in the last six games. Um, they don't play again these two clubs until next April, believe it or not. So you're going to see a different Toronto team that's probably going to obviously make moves at the deadline and have different cats on their team by next year. But this, to me, is the Flyers coming into this game only play 10 games. Other teams play 12, 13, 14, and this is one of those early season games where you just didn't show up. The Flyers obviously were able to find enough. They haven't scored a lot recently. Three against Arizona, two, obviously, last week um, in the 3-2 loss, and then you have a win against Washington, which are able to win 2-1. to one. So that 3-2 loss was, of course, to Pittsburgh. So you played a good defensive game. In this game, you're playing one of the best offensive push teams. They got lucky, obviously, on the first goal as it goes off a of Nylander skate. Then Nylander has a nice second goal there. And then you, of course, have Andre Kasha snipe one in the slot, which is the place you obviously want to primarily defend um, when it comes to defense and on a penalty kill, etc., etc. So this was just not a clean game from the Flyers. Um, on Twitter, Kyle Gippy had a very good tweet about it. Um, where the Flyers are out shooting. This was at this period of the game when he tweeted this. And then I responded to him. He's a very good, uh, or Kyle Filippi, excuse me, had a very good tweet. He worked for NBC Sports. Now he does Philly Voice. He's a very good guy to follow, in my opinion. Where he said the Flyers at this point of the game were out shooting Toronto 23-19, to yet it feels like they've gotten five shots on net. That's because the Flyers were, they had some shifts where they did have good pace. They got some shots on net. And Jack Campbell, after having a very bad game against the LA Kings, did bounce back and have some very good key saves because we've seen already, obviously in hockey you see so many games each year that a team gets outplayed on the score sheet and in the little components of the game, but still wins. For example, us, when we beat Boston 6-3 early in the season and got outshot 40-20 to something and didn't look as squeaky clean as you would want to think to win a game 6-3 at the end. If there was a different goalie in that, yeah, the Flyers probably, like Joseph Wall, for example, who is a guy that seems like a solid maybe backup developing by the time he's 25-26, sure as heck isn't ready for the NHL yet, who was their backup. If they decided to put him in instead of Jack Campbell coming off of a bad outing, the Flyers could have squeaked away with a lucky one of those wins that you get because you're able to just kind of be opportunist when you are able to get the chances, but it wasn't a good, clean overall game for the Flyers, who are now 6-3-2 and two on the season with, I did that math right, I believe that would be 14 uh, points as I'm pulling up the standings, yeah, 14 points, so they're still in a very good spot. They're tied points-wise with Columbus, who's second in the wild card, and they're only two back of Washington for the third spot. And um, obviously we beat Washington last week, so if you can keep being around them, you tie them at the end of the season and you have the against points with them, then that helps big time. But our Flyers, they need to get scoring. I said this early in the season, I think it's a lot harder to stick with lines when it seems like they have chemistry and just don't get in the results than it is to change them. Uh, Jamie Baskow tweeted he thinks they should change some um, for when we go into playing Carolina at Carolina on Friday. At this point, I'm kind of fine with either way. I just think sometimes it's the harder thing to do is to stick with lines that seem like the guys get along chemistry-wise and play the game styles you want as a three-mix blend because obviously you have three forwards on each line and play the game styles you want as a defensive blend also. But obviously you're not getting the goal output, so it might be time to switch it up. I've just been always one of those people that if it looks like they're playing well together without the results. This was really the first game that I thought the pace wasn't the best and they had shifts that were good and then it was off and then it was good and then it was off that was really this big and damning. Even in that 3-2 to two Pittsburgh loss, it was an off and on game, but this one was more of a big off and off game from off and on, excuse me, game from the Flyers where, like Kyle Filippi said, we were out shooting them, but it didn't feel like it at all. And that's just because Toronto seemed to have, once they got into the zone, better offensive sets and better pace, 
where the Flyers just got from some shots, they generated some good chances here and there, probably 20% of the time of the game. And that's when Campbell came up big, where if it was a different goal, where you could have won maybe off of just being opportunist and getting goals in that way, just from the goalie not being as adept as Jack Campbell, who bounced back big. And I would have to give um, the second star of this game, because obviously the first has to go to William Nylander. And then the third star would be Carter Hart for me because this game could have been more ugly when it comes to the score sheet if Carter Hart also didn't bail us out and make some big saves. It was a good game for both goaltenders, but Carter Hart saved the Flyers from having a more bad-looking defeat where the score was only 3 nothing. You still generated a couple chances that if you were playing again, a lesser goaltender, you might have been able to win, but that's not what you, you don't want to be saying that after a game. You're not, there's a bunch of really good goaltenders in this league nowadays, and you only have a select few teams that you're going to go up against a guy that's like a Joseph Wall, not that experienced, or you're going to go up against a guy that's new to the league, like we did with Vilj Melka, who still played well. We were just able to beat him. So, this is a game the Flyers have to learn from. They have to grow from. Maybe it is time to mix up the lines. The offense has to get going. Nine goals in six games ain't going to cut it unless if you play a defensive game in Carter Hart. Or you, unless if you play a defensive game in the goaltending, excuse me, um, plays as well as it did against the Washington Capitals, which is, of course, Martin Jones. Then you're able to actually win a game that way, but you don't want to have to rely on that. The offense was doing good early in the season. It's going to kind of stall. It's been in a stallmate now, so we have to fix that, whether it's changing the lines or whether it's just kind of doing different things in practice to kind of throw the other team off rather than keep doing the same thing. Either way, the Flyers have to find something because they're going into playing one of the best teams in hockey, the 10-1-0 Carolina Hurricanes, in their barn in Carolina on Friday. So this has been a reaction to the Flyers' 3-0 loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. A disappointing night for Flyers fans, but again, we're only 11 games in, and they are the best Corsi team for a reason, the Toronto Maple Leafs. This is the team that we've seen for, really, they've been looking for a team more like this that's really good offensively, but also has been better adept if you look at the numbers defensively. This is the team they're looking for. Now they just have to fix some of the holes when it comes to bottom six in terms of if their team wants to be good for their standpoint, the Toronto standpoint, when it gets to the promised land of the Stanley Cup playoffs. But here's a bit of reaction to the Flyers' 3-0 loss to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Everyone have a good, safe, and pleasant night. Let's bounce back this weekend against Carolina and a Dallas team that I think the Philadelphia Flyers, even in Dallas, should be able to beat on Saturday. Peace out, everybody, and stay safe.